Hey, what's up, dudes? Brad Gatologist here. Uh, we're out here in the garage, full of free stuff again. Gonna see what kind of stuff we can resurrect or repair or whatever. Uh, yesterday, I did complete the second bicycle I had upside down in the last video. Um, put a new inner tube on that yesterday, got it riding. So I've got two bikes. They're both girls' bikes. What makes a girl's bike a girl's bike? I have no idea, but I think that's supposed to be this swooped bar right here for some reason. But a frame is a frame to me. I don't really don't give a shit. I'll ride either one of them. Um, <clears throat> need to get get this out of the way so we can get to one of these lawnmowers. I'm not sure which one we're going to get to. Well, I do want to pull this one out, I think, and fix the wheel on it. You can see that wheel right there is broken, the hub. It needs to be probably epoxied. I'm going to try to epoxy that and see if we can get that to work. Um, this one we might also pull out and just see what it does and what it's going to need. Um, I also need a new fuel line for this one. So I might go to the, to the auto parts store in a bit, take that fuel line off and see if I can get some fuel line for it. Um, and that will, this should be a working machine. Even if I have to, even if I have to grab the back wheels off of this one and swap them over to this one, I'm going to have at least one working machine out of these. And if we get around to it also in this video, we might get one of these washers. I have two washers here now. <laughs> They're multiplying. Um, <laughs> the same fellow who brought me these uh, lawn mowers. He said he had a washing machine that went out on him. So I was like, well, I guess you can bring it too. So we'll see. This will give us something to mess around with. I'll pull uh, either one or both of these out today probably and uh, mess with them too out here on the driveway. See if we can get them, get them going because the cool thing about washing machines at least is you can, uh, you can test them outside. You don't have to have a 220 plug, which I do not in this garage. So I can run uh, these off a of 110 out here, my plug, and... Uh, run the water hose to them at least check that you know that the cold water and everything is not uh, the lines inside are not leaking and that at least give us some indication of what's going on but anyway that's probably what we'll do in this video if it sounds interesting stick around I know a lot of you guys don't like these videos and I honestly don't care um, I've gotten to the point where I do these because they uh, they what's the phrase I'm looking for they give me kind of a peace of mind um, they, they seem to help my mental health just working out problems that I'm not used to trying to work out. You know, I started doing the, uh, the guitar stuff and the repair stuff on amps solely because it was fun to me, um, figuring out stuff all the time. I was learning new things every day. I still do. But the thing is, um, a lot of the problems, once you get to the point where you see the same problems over and over again, it becomes a little bit less fun. Um, because you're not learning quite as much and uh, you know I have so many hundreds of videos about that topic I just feel like you know sometimes I want to move on and try different things so that's the purpose of this just trying some different things and doing different things so again if that's something you like great if it's not then that's cool too uh, no hard feelings you know uh, stick around and eventually I'll get back to some guitar stuff it's not gone completely um, I've got stuff in line to do actually so it is what it is, but right now while it's sunny and uh, the weather's nice, uh, I don't want to be stuck inside in the lab, you know, on a bench when the weather is this nice instead of, you know, where I could be outside fixing some stuff outside, hearing the birds sing, you know what I mean? It's just, to me, it's a, uh, it's a little more spiritually uplifting. But anyway, uh, let's get to one of these. Actually, we'll go ahead and pull out this lawnmower here. We'll see if we can epoxy that wheel. Oh yeah, you like my hammock? I set that up yesterday. It's not, uh, it's not really to regulation. But it only has to hold the kids, because I'm not going to get on it. But They like it, so. This really isn't far enough in the ground. Really. Um, and it's not big enough. It needs to be about a 6 inch by 6 inch post these are four by four but again I'm not gonna be getting on it and neither is anybody really heavy so this is only for the kids this side's already pulled forward a lot more than I'm kind of comfortable with so what I'm gonna do is uh, probably 
to take this off today and kick this back and um, put some more stakes on the front edge. But anyway, there's that. All right, that's probably going to be metric, what, maybe 15 millimeter, something like that. That's what all this stuff seems to be on the bigger hubs. Nope. Try 14. Really? It's not metric? Surely it's metric. Not metric. It's not a half, is it? Maybe it's a half. Nope. Well, I'll tell you what exactly. I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's a. It's an adjustable. <laughs> Whoop, did I just round that damn thing off? I did. Shit. Well. Vice grip it is then, I guess. Probably should be gripping these this way. I'll get more per turn when I Okay. Okay, well, I don't know if this is going to go or not. It's in three pieces. So the hub is, com yeah, that's completely shattered. I don't see that. I don't see that happening. And these, these, this particular tire for this model to match the other one, uh, these are 50 bucks for just that. So, yeah, that's not happening. I don't know. Let's see what we got actually. Uh, we still might we still might try to epoxy this. Um, it's probably really foolish. Yeah, there's there's no way. I mean, you can see how shattered that is. Yeah, there's just no way. It almost looks like, um, huh, was there just no bearing in this at all? It's just the uh, plastic bearing the load? I think it is. I think it's just the plastic bits bearing the, bearing the load on these. Um, so that's no good. You know, this looks like it's probably going to be a good running mower as well. I mean, it's not old. Uh, and I think it's just a case of, you know, maybe even user error or lack of maintenance, you know, something like that. We might be able to get this one up and going too. So I hate to steal the wheels off of this one, considering it is pretty, probably pretty close to running itself. Um, that one I know already runs. It, it's got massive deck rot in the back though. See the deck rot? This runs though, the motor runs perfectly. So I'm thinking, I don't know, let me look at this right here. I've got some wheels up here. They probably aren't gonna work, but let me see if they will. Maybe they will. They're small. These came off of a stroller. Um, 
Now obviously they're going to have to bear more weight than if they were on a stroller, but still, I'd rather try this than spend the 50 bucks or rob off of another good mower. Okay, now that I got this piece off of here, I don't, that's not going to happen because uh, you see the difference in hub size. I mean that right there. Yeah, there's just no, there's no comparison there. This, it's going to need something this size. So we're going to probably have to rob this mower after all. There's one more option I didn't consider. I've got this little trike thing that was also pulled off the curb a couple years back. Okay, so we're going to grab this little bike. It's on the side of the road here. Yeah, what is this thing? It's a Triton. A Triton. It's got a flat tire. But, let's see. We might be able to do something with it. You want to fix it? Sure. All right. I just uh, have sat it in here because it just, it looked like something that might be cool. You know, to repair. Um, I think it's just got a real busted up seat. And it needs a pin to go in and um, this middle bit right here because this extends uh, but the tires on that look like they're about the same diameter as the tires on the mower but I'm not sure about the hub I mean this is basically parts anyway but um, you know it's got pneumatic tires I don't know the hub on this uh, I mean these at least have bearings, you know, unlike the plastic crap. I'll tell you what, let's drag this out. Let's drag this out and we'll see what these tires look like. Okay, here's a little better look at it in the sun. What do we need there? That's a, is that a big Torx or big hex? I mean, see what I mean? Diameter wise, they're kind of in the same family of size there which is probably more than I could say for those back tires right there. Those are a bit smaller, considerably so. Not that that matters a great deal, but uh, it does matter when you're setting the deck height. It might be limited on what it can do with the deck height with wheels, with certain wheels. I'll tell you what, I hate, to, I hate to destroy this thing. It's kind of cool. But at the same time, it hasn't been doing anything for me just sitting back there, so... That wheel's pretty worn right there, and I would have to use both of them. So we want to, I'll just make sure they hold air first. Let's do that first. Because if I have to order inner tubes, it's not going to be worth it. All right. Oh, I heard a little bit of air come out, so that's promising. Seems to be holding there. Hmm. Alright, well, let's try the other one. Because without a matching set, it's, it's going to be pointless. That one's got a little air in it, too, which is good. Yeah, you know what? That might work right there. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and pull the we'll pull the tires off. At least one of them, and we'll see if it fits. I could probably even just measure it right here. Well, no, I'm not gonna be able to measure it right there. That's just the uh, that's just the back of the axle. Is that telling me what I need to know? Where are we? Let's see. Maybe you. Nope. Is this standard? Yeah, so you're going to be metric. Of course. Of course you're going to be metric. Alright. We're going to be able to get it off of there? Okay. 
a viewer of the channel sent me this. This is an Estwing. He sent me a really nice note. We'll look at the uh, we'll look at the note that he sent me. He also sent me a CD of his band. Wear safety goggles. Um, he said his family was the original uh, owners of this company, and this is one this is one piece. This metal all the way down. Super, super, super cool. That he was sent that he would send me that. I really appreciate it. Let's see. Oh, there it is. That little valve stem cap. All right. Let's see if is it going to fit. I think it's going to fit. I think it's going to fit. I really do. Yep, it fits perfectly. It fits perfectly. Okay. I mean, I would say pneumatic tires is going to be somewhat of an upgrade. The only problem is, you know, you're going to have to replace inner tubes when they eventually go flat. But, and also, if they're going flat and you don't realize it, you know, you might get some uneven mowing. That's the only downfall. But, you know, this, I would much rather have these spokes and this hub than that plastic crap that they're giving us now. I think this is going to do it. I'm going to pull both of these off of here and use these. It actually looks cooler too, I think. Makes it a better looking more. I'll keep the hardware with this because I'll eventually probably probably put these back on this thing. But for now, just to have a working unit here, we're gonna go with this. I think I want to put a spacer though behind it, some kind of uh, Maybe even part of the old, that might work pro pro perfectly. That's exactly what I'm going to do, and I have two of them too. So let me see if that works. I'm gonna grab that right there. That's a piece of the old one. Stick it on. Alright, which part do we want where? I probably like that. And then, like that gonna work it is gonna work look at that look at that it's gonna work but it's gonna make it harder to get to maybe let me see if I can make sure make sure I can get a socket on that I don't think we ever determined even what it was did we all right yeah no I don't like that Okay, uh, I do notice that this has a lot of excess plastic here. I think I want to cut this off, and that's that might give me enough room. All right, cut that little lip off of there. And I think this is a... I think it's a 9 16th. At least that's what seems to be fitting on there. So, let's try that again. Oh, cut myself.
gonna stay. Now get this other one off of here. Well, that was a monstrous arachnid right there when he was alive. That one needs no persuasion. He's good. Yeah, see though, this would have been a pretty cool little trike. Uh, so I may put that back together at some point. It's just there, it's more useful to me now as parts. Okay, that one was on there. I need that other plastic piece. What I do with it? You know what's funny? I'm sitting here eyeballing these wheels on my <laughs> on my trash cans because the same dude who gave me this and that machine and the other machines, he said he had a couple of old ones, trash cans. <laughs> and I'm looking at it and those wheels probably would do it. I wonder if it'd be worth it just to get the wheels. Well, I gotta find that other plastic piece. I don't know what the hell happened to it. I had it in my hand, but that's the way it goes. You carry something around for five minutes, and then when you need it, you realize you don't have it anymore. Hmm, oh, it's a set right there. There we go. That'll work. I'll try not to cut myself again this time. that you know what I should probably grease these axles just put like a little of this on there probably too much All right, those are on there. <clears throat> okay, we definitely need a fuel hose for this before we can try to run it. Um, I do want to wash it off at some point too. Just clean it up. It's really nasty on the deck. And is that, yep, yeah, you've got paint bubbling back here. I don't want that to get away from us. So I'll probably turn the deck over too and wash it. Uh, but before we do any of that, more to this, let's go ahead and pull this one out and see what it's doing the same owner of both he said he bought both of these from a from ja different uh, two different Japanese families he, he teaches English to Japanese people because he's bilingual and uh, he knew a couple of Japanese families who were moving back to Japan and uh, at different times they sold them uh, their mowers because they, obviously they can't take them back to Japan so that's how he acquired them and then he ran them until something happened and kind of parked them Let's see what kind of first of all this one's both of these were parked outside Ooh, that that was barely on there but then again that might it might not matter it's got a lot of fuel in it which can be a bad sign he said they've been parked for a while so parked with fuel is probably not good That air cleaner's not too bad. That, that uh, filter, it doesn't seem too bad. 
Um, also parked outside, one of the things we're gonna probably have to do here is pull pull this cover off and make sure the flywheel doesn't have a bunch of crap in it. Like, you know, uh, mouse nests and crap. Should sure keep that on there so it don't, you don't cut yourself and also so the teeth don't wear unnecessarily. Uh, so, where's the 25 I had yesterday to find it? Okay, uh, all right, let's see what we got going on under here. Something's latching, is it right here? It is, isn't it? It's right here under this. It's a, it's a clasp, it's not a, it's a, okay. It's actually, it's actually not bad under there. It's actually not bad. That's all free. This is a, uh, okay, so this has got like a, a thermal self-regulator on it, so it doesn't really have a speed. Oh, well, maybe it does have a variable speed. Um, it does have a variable speed, but how does that work? Oh, that's for the, that's for the drive. But the engine speed is regulated by this. Um, so when, this should be like a little thermal element. I don't know if you can see it or not. That right there should be a little thermal element. And when it heats up or cools down, it puts more or less pressure on this arm, uh, adjusting the throttle accordingly. Uh, but none of that looks like it's been knocked or in any way or anything like that. So I don't think there's that's going to be a problem. Um, and this is relatively clean. Is it going to be? Is it free? I guess that that's the main thing. Is it free? It is, it's turning, but, yep, it's turning, but ooh, that sounded, that sounded uh, like metal on metal. Has it got oil? Probably not. It has almost no oil. Okay. <laughs> so the last machine I repaired had way too much oil, and this one has none. Um, Let's put, I'm not even exactly sure precisely, it's probably SAE 30, I'm sure it is. I'll tell you what, let's get some of this in here and we'll just, uh, we'll get it to the full line. Well, it's got a little bit on it, I guess, but let's get it to the full line and then just kind of crank on it and turn that over a little bit. We're in between the dots now. I want to get it to the top dot though. I'm gonna call that good. And the oil is clean. What is what's in there, at least right now, what's in there is clean. It looked like the original oil was clean, it just wasn't enough of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this a few times just to get things kind of turning over. Maybe maybe we can splash some of that oil up there. Well that right there is maladjusted something's not right with that I think they got this bar on the wrong one this bar when you clamp this it's supposed to come all the way back to this one so you can hold them together but right now it's stopping right here and you can see the travel that it has you see the travel it has up there it's it's going all the way over so I think they've got this bar in the wrong hole so we're gonna move this to down somebody put I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll see if it's true. Let's see. Yeah, see that that bar should lean. That should come all the way back like that, I would think. But it's not even close. So this linkage is, I don't know. It's either. Hmm. Also, there's a kill under here. And that's all really, really dirty, so we'll have to probably clean that too. Uh, but just looking at it, I, I uh, hmm, why would that linkage be so far off? I just don't understand that. 
why is that so far off? But we do have a lot of gas in it. Um, I could check it for spark, but I, I, I want to see if it fires at all. I'm curious. I'm really curious to see if it fires. So let's let's pull that. Yeah, see that's that's uncomfortable. How does how does anybody even mow like that <laughs> with their hands like that? You got to mow with a claw. I'll tell you what, too. I'm gonna I'm gonna also pull this up to this point where it was. Is there a gas on off maybe maybe they turned the gas off that would be good if they did I don't see a valve no I think this this gas is just on all the time there's no valve on the tank so let's just hope it didn't set too long Ooh. What about that? Whoops. Oh, knocked the hubcap off. Ah, shit. It does not like being pulled. Oh, there it goes. It pops all the way back. Well. That feels like it's un, uneven, like there might be a blade issue. I definitely want to check that. I don't want to mess around with the blade too much because the spark plug is still in it, but it doesn't appear to be bent or anything. The deck's clear for the most part, so I don't think it's anything to do with any of that. All right, let's keep trying to crank it for a minute. Let's see if we can get some fire. Ooh, we got something. Am I spitting gas? Is that what's coming out? Got some smoke happening there. Well, I'm gonna leave that off for a minute so we can see what's coming out the breather. Whoop. That thing is hard to crank. Ooh, we got something. It doesn't sound good, does it? maybe got a stuck valve or something I don't know it's uh because on some of the pools it's doing nothing at all and here at the breather we've got well we did I think it's gas I think it's gas that's in there which I would understand a little bit of gas um, but it seemed a little bit oily at first too tell you what May take this. It did seem like we were maybe getting sparked because I wouldn't have expected it to fire the way it. I don't think that was all compression. I think it was. I think there was some fire in there too. Um, now, but then again, the muffler is stone cold. You would think if there were any explosions that we'd be getting something, but it seems stone cold. So I'll tell you what, let's, um, let's go ahead and take the rest of this cover off right here, the uh, starter assembly. We'll look under here and see what's going on, and then we may take this valve cover right here off. Let's pull the spark plug, see if we're even getting spark. 
that looks really oily that's see what I mean that's what I was seeing coming out of the breather over here too there's a bunch of oil tell you what I want to do um, I think I want to put this uh, I, want, I want to put the starter back on the starter assembly back on and crank it a few times and maybe any oil that's locked inside of there maybe it'll spit that on out but it's pretty clean underneath here so uh, you know we didn't have any critters setting up shop down there or anything like that when it's time outside so that's good all right like I said what I want to do is crank this a couple times and see what spits out we want to see what spits out of there It's turning really free now. It's not locked. Uh. Oh, I can feel good compression. Good compression. You can hear it. You can hear all the cycles. Shit, shit, shit. Shit, 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 shit. So it's all open and closing like it should. I think it's a spark issue. Probably from being set outside. Probably something to do with the magneto. And then we've got this really oily, dirty uh, spark plug too though. We'll wipe that off. Okay, I might have a replacement spark plug on hand for that. I'm not sure, uh, but I want to see if we get anything at all. Let's see if we get anything there. Now I'm seeing spark. Can you see it? I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. There's spark. You can see it, and it's. Timing properly too. It sounds like you can even hear it sparking. Yeah, it's sparking. Okay. Well, we've got spark. We've got compression. We've got gasoline. Is it getting? Ga it's probably a carb issue then. Uh, But yeah, being parked with uh, with gas in it, you kind of expect that, I guess. I would like to be able to get this going with minimal tinkering. I don't necessarily want to have to take that carb off and clean the whole thing if I don't have to. But it's looking like I'm going to have to. Just what it, it is, what it is. Okay, I got this outer guard off of this carb. And there's something missing. There's a uh, there's a piece of the choke missing. I think whoever owned this probably first took this piece of the choke off. You see how this is self-regulated? So this this moves in, like I said earlier, with the temperature thing over there. Uh, but you can see there's something missing here, and it would have screwed in here and, and back there, I think, and attached to this somehow basically it's like the choke is just completely missing they took it off I guess they got fed up with dealing with it not running at full blast uh, but the problem is if you're trying to start it, it makes it harder to start I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna try squirting some uh, fuel in here just directly and see if we can't make something happen
Okay, I think the thing to do now is to uh, tip that fuel out that's in the tank. Uh, we'll tilt it over and tilt that uh, pick, tilt it out into something, and uh, take that carb off. It just pulls right off from where it is right now. I see you see it's separated back here already. So we'll pull that off and get that up on uh, the table or the bench up there and uh, get a little closer look at it. But yeah, we're definitely missing a piece of that carb. Okay, I'm back with this thing. Um, I took the <clears throat> took the carb out and checked the float bowl and all that stuff, and it was so clean in there. I felt like I could eat out of it. Uh, it was spotless, in fact. Looked really good inside the carb. But then I took the uh, the valve head off here, and look what I found. So this would explain a lot. So with this rocker floating like that. Uh, yeah, that's that's not good. That that valve, that means that valve right there was not open at all, and that makes sense for what uh, what it was doing because it felt like it was only hitting on half of the cycle or something. I don't know. It was it was weird. But let's see. So this pin is supposed to sit in that little groove right. You see that little dimple right there? That pin is supposed to sit on that little dimple, so let's back this out. We'll set that on, on that where it belongs. Like that. And you can see how far screwed, screwed in this one is. This one was screwed way out. Still, that's still way loose. Let me um, let me get a tool on that and tighten that up, and see if that fixes things. We'll come back to it. Okay, so that attempt was a fail. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't get to show you that, but it's kind of hard to do at the moment. Um, tried to screw that on there and tighten that up, and the bolt broke. It was already weakened for sure because it didn't take much effort at all to break it. Um, I just I tightened down a little bit too too much and it broke right off at the uh, right at the rocker. So I don't know something must have been going on with it. It must have taken a hit of some kind. Maybe at some point it or worked itself loose and then because it was flopping around in here, you know maybe I don't know. Um, it was uh, maybe it was knocking intermittently and bent you know weakened the bolt right there. But we've got to find another one of those bolts and until we can do that. We won't be able to fix this engine, but I, I'm pretty confident that's the problem right there. We're at reinstalling this rocker arm on the valve here. I did get the new part in, so the uh, the post is set in there, the mounting screw. Now we need to adjust the uh, the clearance. So on the exhaust side, in between the rocker arm and the valve. Uh, stem right there uh, there should be somewhere I think on a Briggs and Stratton on the exhaust side there should be somewhere between 0 .007 and 0 .009 so we're gonna shoot for 0 .008 uh, which that pretty much is right there 0 .008 um, and there's an outer screw here uh, which gives you a rough adjustment and so you get that pretty much dialed in and then when you're done with that uh, then you screw in this little uh, internal adjustment screw right there to the point where uh, it's all the way in and then you want to recheck but uh, what I want to do here is uh, and these will have some play in them that's normal uh, I want to I want to just tighten down that set screw now and we'll also go ahead and check the intake as well so on the exhaust so we just want to tighten down this this little set screw in the center not too tight but just enough where it's not going to go anywhere and then we want to check the clearance again just make sure it didn't move and we're still at .008 on that now the clearance for the intake is going to be less. The reason the exhaust clearance is greater 
is because the exhaust uh, has a tendency to expand more so it heats up and uh, uh, this valve will expand somewhat and push against this rocker arm so between 0 0.002 and 0 0.004 is where we want to be on this one on the intake and this and we're measuring in inches by the way just so you know I want to shoot for right in the middle of, of those figures, so we'll go with point zero zero three. Once again, we'll shoot for the middle. And if you can just barely get that in there, then it's where it needs to be, and that's pretty loose. So we're going to tighten that up just a bit. First, though, we want to lose. We want to back off of the set screw in the center. Okay, we'll back off of that just a little bit and then we'll come in and we'll tighten this down probably too much there a bit too much you just want to get it to where you can just pull your feeler gauge out there we go all right And then we'll tighten that set screw back up. Like I said, not not overly tightened. All right. And then we will double check. And it's hard to push in there, but that seems about a point double oh three so I think that is correct so now we'll get the uh, get the cover back on get the valve cover back on here we'll make sure that all our uh, gaskets clear of debris Okay, uh, that probably should have been torque wrenched, but uh, I don't have a torque wrench. But just doing going by feel, we'll check it later and see if it leaks at all. If it does, we'll just give it a little bit more of a tighten whenever it's warm, and that should get us where we need to be. Uh, let's go ahead and throw the uh, let's throw the top back on this. Um, we're gonna have to do something about that. We're gonna have to do something about that missing choke. I might either I'll either have to make one or I have to buy a whole new carb for this thing. I don't want to do a whole new carb, so I may trace the outline of that and try to make one. This particular model of engine has a tendency to get stuck right here on this uh, uh, this throttle check or whatever you want to call it. I get, well, this is the choke actually. Uh, the choke actually has a tendency to get stuck right there, wide open. Uh, what some people do is they come in here and either bend this bracket out this way, uh, or they'll take and grind off the end of this plastic piece right here so that that doesn't get stuck but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it I'm not worried about that yet we, we're probably going to replace this 
entire carburetor anyway because uh, it's missing the butterfly in there the choke let's see what, if we can get it uh, started I want to choke it with something uh, choke it with a rag for right now we'll just kind of plug the hole a little bit with that kind of restrict the flow of air until we can get it started Oh shit. Oh, I did not did not even plug up the damn gasoline. Shit. That was stupid. That was really stupid. Oh, there was my rookie mistake for the day. That's alright. We don't need very much. We shouldn't need very much. Alright. Make sure we're clear. None underneath. Let's see what we got. I can't believe that. I can't believe it just started on the first damn pull. Well, I mean, I can, but... <laughs> okay, so... I'm definitely going to have to do something about the carb. That's that's an issue for sure. Uh, we'll wash it up as well. Um, yeah, get this cover back on here. And that's pretty much that. I wonder if it... I'm actually kind of curious to see if it would start uh, without choking it, without putting that rag in there. It might now that it's already warm. It would be interesting to see if it could, you could do it a, a, as a cold start. But let's try it as a warm start and see if it starts up first pull. Yes, it does. All right, I think that'll that'll do it for this one. I'm just going to call it right there. Um, so we're two for two on the lawnmower front. We've got well, I guess three for three because I'm going to count that one back there because it started immediately. So that one's fixed. That one's fixed. By the way, I got the stuff in for it as well. I'll show you. Let's see. I got the uh, uh, the second arm for the uh, drive control. Got the got the fuel line installed. Um, and we'll see. Let's give her a little choke and. See that right there? It's actually going up on its own. Now it's starting.
All right, so that's that. We've got uh, three for three now on the lawnmower front for the summer, so I'm happy about that. I'm one out of two on the washer front. Uh, this one still has an issue. This one was perfect. This one will be sold soon. Um, yeah, and coming up probably in another video will be this guy. And we are two for two on weed eaters. Get, getting both these fixed. And we're one for one on leaf blowers. So yeah, that'll do it for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, hit subscribe. We'll see y'all.
So the other day after he brought these to me, I uh, gave him a call and asked him if he had the grass catchers and it turns out he did. So he dug up the grass catchers for both of these. So I've got the one for that one and the one for this one too.